Tónaiste, could you explain to the public why successive Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael led governments, including many that you were a part of, have pursued over many, many years a systematic strategy of denying rights and entitlements to vulnerable people and to people who have been wronged by the state, uh, often using, pursuing a very hostile, cynical legal strategy to deny uh, people their rights. Uh, we had vulnerable people in long-term residential uh, care with disabilities denied uh, their disability allowances. Uh, we had, before that, women affected by cervical check and scandal subjected uh, to a very hostile legal uh, strategy. Last night, we had the government yet again excluding tens of thousands of mothers and children who were victims uh, of the abuse by church and state in the mother and baby homes, uh, arbitrary, arbitrarily and unjustifiably excluded uh, from the redress scheme. And then, of course, there is the scandal of the nursing home fees, uh, wrongfully uh, levied on vulnerable people, often elderly people, unwell people, uh, where uh, the government has fought them every step of the way, legally and otherwise, uh, to deny them their rights and entitlements and to use legal strategies uh, to prevent them getting those entitlements and to hush up where the uh, government were forced, because of legal action, uh, to acknowledge uh, the, the refunds that they were entitled uh, to. And I want to ask you very particularly, uh, Tornish Day, you were Minister for Health in 2000, between 2000 and 2004. Uh, in that year, this report was laid before you. Nursing home subventions, uh, 70 pages uh, detailing how successive governments, successive governments knew that the fees being charged in nursing homes were illegal, uh, that there was no legal basis for them, no legal basis for them, 2001. Uh, also, by the way, and this is important, saying that people who had taken it, got, gone to private nursing homes were in fact entitled to public nursing home care, but there was none available to them and they were forced into the private system. And you're still saying they weren't entitled when that report made it clear that they were uh, entitled. Another report in 2003 by the Human Rights uh, Commission saying the same thing. Another report in 2010 by the Ombudsman, the Who Cares report, uh, while you were uh, a minister in the government. Where was your moral compass when it came uh, to acknowledging uh, the rights and entitlements of vulnerable people? How could you treat people in that disgusting fashion? That's fine, I would say I would disagree with your narrative and your assertion in terms of the last 30 years and the 30 years before that. Um, I would say if you go back over the last 25 years, go right through it. Um, there's, no, there's quite a significant number of redress schemes. One of my very first decisions was to launch the very first investigation um, into the role uh, of church and state in the industrial schools. First time it was ever done. Um, and we had a very extensive redress scheme in the aftermath of the commission in relation to institutional abuse in our industrial schools. I think at the time it raised over a billion um, in, in, in redress payments back. Uh, I would have uh, been the first to do the investigation um, into Ferns, into the Ferns inquiry. Uh, and subsequently then other ministers did the Dublin Diocese um, and, and the um, Cloyne. Point being that the last 25 to 30 years has been about revelations about the 20th century in Ireland. And in many instances, significant redress schemes um, initiated. And that's the reality. I've only just said earlier that in the last two and a half years alone, the government has decided to, to commit itself to retrospective payments in a range of a range of issues that totals close to six billion. Six billion. Um, and I'm not counting all of the various redress schemes over the last 10 years um, or 20 years. Um, and the, 
the fundamental issue with nursing home charges and with disability allowance was actually the policy was transparent for well over 30 years, deputy. Very transparent in terms of people um, in, in, in full sight, contributions were taken from people in residential settings from their pensions and so on. It transpired that the regulations that gave effect to that were uh, in not consistent with the primary act in respect of public um, uh, nursing home charges. That's what the 2005 Supreme Court decision um, decided conclusively in respect of public health charges. And a redress scheme, again close to half a billion, was initiated and paid back. In terms of the patients or medical card patients in private nursing home, it was never accepted by the Oireachtas or the government uh, that they were entitled to the entirety of um, payments in respect of, you know, in terms of the cost of private nursing home. I mean, subventions at that stage were the order of the day. And in fact, if you look at the Fair Deal scheme, which ultimately dealt with the issue in terms of uh, a legislative template, that to this day continues the principle of people making a contribution to both public health care and private care to this very day. Same applies in, in, in Northern Ireland uh, in respect of disability allowance. Um, and as I have said, right now there are 30 sensitive cases that the government will be alerted to all of them with significant cost implications for the state. The ultimate challenge is, and we have to make a call on this, every government will in its day. Does the, does the current generation keep on paying for historic Thank you, wrongs, or do we concentrate and focus on the needs, which are very real today, right across the board in social services and, and so forth? Tarnished, did you read this report in 2001? Uh, because it made very clear very clear that successive governments, including the one you were part of, knew the basis on which these charges were being levied had no legal basis. Had no legal basis. And you have gone on to, to, to repeat what the, what the Taoiseach said earlier this week about the state still not conceding that people who were in private nursing homes but had medical cards had uh, the right to uh, have the fees uh, paid. The Ombudsman report that I'm referring to said the following. In 2001, when you were Minister for Health, the Ombudsman noted that the health boards appeared to be directing such patients and their families towards private care without in any way acknowledging the board's own responsibilities in this area. People were being forced into private nursing homes because the state had failed to provide them the public uh, nursing home care they were entitled to, and you knew this and you knew the charges they were being levied had no legal basis, long before courts made decisions uh, on it, and you did thank nothing you, thank about you, it. Thank you, thank uh, and vulnerable Lord, people had to fight and face le hostile legal strategies. It's immoral. Garamagos. It's immoral. To respond. Thank you. First of all, um, the, you're wrong in your assertion in terms of the legal um, advice and in terms of nursing home charges. Uh, it was never... Um, uh, conceded that in, in respect of medical card uh, patients in terms of uh, access to the entirety of their cost in, in, in private nursing homes. In fact, if you look at the budgetary, like the budgets are going up incrementally, exponentially, year after year in terms of an aging population. By the way, we still have that challenge today. But no one wants to pay for it. And all this money isn't my money. It's not your money. It's the taxpayer's money. We're all birds of passage here. Yeah, we are. But you want 100% retrospection for everything. No, for everything. I, I've no doubt. If I've no doubt, and I've no doubt, if we reveal all of the legal strategies and all of the legal cases that are before the state at the moment, I know what your response would be. Pay it all out. You're asking the current taxpayer to do all of that. And these are not popular decisions. There was a time. Governments are there. The executive is there for a reason from time to time. We can be judged rightly, wrongly. I accept that. But we do need to have an honest debate about it as well in terms of uh, how far back do we go, how much do we pay, in, in terms of wrongs of the, of the 20th century, uh, whereas, today, whereas today we have real issues, we have an expanding population, we have an aging population, uh, which need resources, and we need to advance social care and do, and, and do better in, in many respects. That's the call we have to make.